Greetings from Multisoft. We welcome you to today's session on 8051 microcontroller. In this session, I will provide you details related to the embedded systems industry, talk about 8051 microcontroller in particular, and give you information about the online training offered for the same by Multisoft. Hope you find this session informational. I will start with the agenda first. To begin with, I will talk about the 8051 microcontroller, then provide an introduction to embedded systems and later move on to the course details. After this, we will start with the sneak preview section that you should find very interesting as here I will discuss some course related concepts. This will not just enhance your knowledge but also provide you a view of how online training will happen. The next section will be Multisoft 8051 online training where I will give you details about the training deliverables and the approach of the training. At the end, I will summarize the session for you. So let's get started and understand what an 8051 microcontroller is. 8051 is a Harvard Architecture CISC instruction set single chip microcontroller series. It was developed by Intel in 1980 for use in embedded systems and is formerly known as Intel MCS51. 8051 microcontroller has a 4 KB ROM and 128 byte RAM on chip. It has been licensed to various manufacturers worldwide. Successor to the 8048 microcontroller, the industry found great potential in 8051 that could be embedded in various ASIC chips for performing setup and control tasks. Let's now understand what are embedded systems. The field of embedded systems is wide and varied, and it is difficult to pin down exact definitions or descriptions. Commonly, embedded systems are defined as a combination of hardware and software that together form a component of a larger machine. A good example of an embedded system is the microwave oven. Almost every household has one and tens of millions of them are used every day. But very few people realize that a processor and software are involved in the preparation of their lunch or dinner. 8051 is one of the most popular general purpose microcontrollers in use today. 8051 chips contain several general purpose input output pins that are software configurable. When configured to the input state, they are often used to read sensors or external signals. And when configured to the output state, the GPIO pins can drive external devices such as LEDs or motors. The range of applications continues to expand with ongoing research and development. Consumer electronics and information technology companies envision homes filled with intelligent devices that can interact with each other, homeowners and appliance manufacturers to improve the quality of daily life. With multifunctional ACs, LED screen TVs, fully automatic washing machines, living life has become merrier and easier. On the other hand, the internet, wireless networking and communications industries have not just established but strengthened connections across borders. Inexpensive cameras and automotive telematics can be combined to pass information to millions of commuters in large cities so as to reduce delays, frustration, energy use and air pollution. Sensor networks can be deployed in large agricultural areas to monitor and report on crop quality and the environment, adjusting irrigation and fertilization as necessary. Medical researchers are investigating microscopic sensors that could traverse the bloodstream, monitor health conditions and report them wirelessly. In the image, you can see how a small device can perform X-ray of your palm. Let's understand embedded systems from a device-based perspective. Almost everything around us is an embedded system or has a component of it. Some of the common embedded systems devices are ATC, that is air traffic control systems. Then we have biometric machines that help us do an identity check. Humanoids or robotics equipment are another example of embedded system. Such devices are made to perform repetitive tasks. PDA, that is personal digital assistance that most of us are aware of, help us maintain personal data more easily and systematically. 
I am sure you are also well aware of ATMs and the ATM swipe card machines that have not just eradicated the need to be always loaded with paper money but also added convenience to our lives. Embedded systems form the basis of the so-called post-PC era in which information processing is more and more moving away from just PCs to embedded systems. One of the characteristics of embedded software is that it is heavily dependent on the underlying hardware. The reason of the dependency is that embedded software needs to be designed in an application specific way. Frequently, an embedded system is a component within some larger system. For example, modern cars and trucks contain many embedded systems. One embedded system controls the anti-lock brakes, another monitors and controls the vehicle's emissions, and a third one displays information on the dashboard. In some cases, these embedded systems are connected by some sort of communications network, but that is certainly not a requirement. By definition, all embedded systems contain a processor and software. But what other features do they have in common? Certainly, in order to have software, there must be a place to store the executable code and a temporary storage for runtime data manipulation. These take the form of ROM and RAM respectively. Any embedded system will have some of each. If only a small amount of memory is required, it might be contained within the same chip as the processor. Otherwise, one or both memory types will reside in external memory chips. All embedded systems also contain some types of inputs and outputs. For example, in a microwave oven, the inputs are the buttons on the front panel and a temperature probe and the outputs are the human readable display and the microwave radiation. So, for interaction of microcontroller to inputs and outputs, some input-output hardware mechanism is provided on chip. Talking in terms of the preferred choice of programming language, C language is small and fairly simple to learn. Compilers are available for almost every processor in use today. And there is a very large body of experienced C programmers. In addition, C has the benefit of processor independence which allows programmers to concentrate on algorithms and applications rather than on the details of a particular processor architecture. While many of these advantages apply equally to other high-level languages, but the reason behind C language's success is that it is a very low-level, high-level language. We shall see throughout the course that C gives embedded programmers an extraordinary degree of direct hardware control without sacrificing the benefits of high-level languages. But of course, C is not the only language used by embedded programmers. Experts also use C++ and assembly languages. The percentage of C use is approximately 80% with C++ and assembly having 49% and 75% share respectively. However, it must be noted that the overlap area is known as inline assembly language, in which the programming is done in C and assembly language both. Hope you understood all that I discussed till now. Let's now discuss the course details. First of all, let us know about the ideal audience for this course. These include engineering students, engineering graduates and postgraduates, working professionals in embedded and electronics industry, hobbyists, and embedded and electronics engineers. Talking about the prerequisites, participants must have basic knowledge of digital electronics. Basic knowledge about embedded systems and C language is an added advantage. After completing the course, students will be able to design systems based on 8051 microcontrollers using all its peripherals. The modules shared on the screen will be taught in detail in the actual training. Let's move on to the sneak preview section now. I will elaborate on RAM organization today and we hope that you find it interesting and knowledgeable. 8051 has 256 bytes of internal addressable RAM, although only the first 128 bytes are available for general use by the programmer. The first 128 bytes of RAM are called the direct memory and can be used to store data. The second group of 128 bytes is the upper area of addressable memory, from 0 into 80 to 0 into FF. 
these addresses are used to store special function registers. The lowest 32 bytes are divided into 4 banks of registers in which each bank has 8 registers R0 to R7. RAM locations from 0 to 7 are set aside for bank 0 of R0 to R7 where R0 is the RAM location 0, R1 is the RAM location 1, R2 is RAM location 2 and so on until memory location 7 which belongs to R7 of bank 0. It is much easier to refer to these RAM locations with names such as R0, R1 and so on than by their memory locations. Register bank 0 is the default when 8051 is powered up. Addresses from 0 into 20 to 0 into 2F that is 16 bytes are reserved as bit addressable and is called the bit addressable part of RAM where bit operations can be performed through bit addressable instructions. The next 80 byte locations are called scratch pad where rough work can be done that is intermediate calculations can be performed. Now let's get into some details of SFR area of RAM. The higher 128 bytes of locations are reserved for SFRs. If in case the 8051 consists of 256 bytes internal RAM, these upper 128 bytes overlap with the higher 128 bytes of internal RAM. These are 21 SFRs. They are accessed in normal internal RAM by 8051C and they are all defined in the header file reg51.h. This area consists of a series of memory map ports and registers. All port input and output can therefore be performed by get and set operations on SFR port name such as P3. Also, different status registers are mapped into the SFR for checking the status of 8051 and changing some operational parameters of the 8051. In addition to the input-output ports, the most frequently used SFRs to control and configure 8051 operations are TCON that is Timer Control, TMOD that is Timer Mode, THO, TH1 and TLO, TL1 that is Timers High and Low Bytes. The next one is SCON that is Serial Port Control. IP that's interrupt priority and IE that's interrupt enable. All 8051 CPU registers, input output ports, timers and other architecture components are accessible in 8051C through the SFRs listed. If you found the sneak review section informational, do write to us. I'll now move on to the Multisoft 8051 online training section. Here I will give you a complete view of how online training will happen and what all you will get as a part of the training. When you register with us for 8051 microcontroller online training, we will connect with you as per the pre-decided time and impart training for 18 hours in all. For the exact schedule and each session's duration, you can refer to the training calendar for the course on our website. The training happens over Cisco Webex. This is a secure web conferencing tool from Cisco that allows real-time learning experience. Once you register with us, we send out event links to you, wherein you log into a Multisoft WebEx that allows two-way interaction between the student and the trainer through webcam and voice chat. It is as good as a classroom since the whiteboard allows the trainer to transfer knowledge as done in a classroom. The share option lets the experts share files videos, applications and even desktops. Once you register with us, we provide you 24 by 7 access to an online resource center wherein apart from accessing other training material, you can also attempt 5 online quizzes and 2 assessments. Apart from these 2 valuable practice resources, you also get access to all related presentations, projects and training material. This is a sample of the online assessment which will test your knowledge on the various 8051 course concepts. All the questions will have 4 options out of which you need to select the correct one. At the end of the assessment you will get the information on the correct answers and reasoning behind the same. Let's now summarize today's session. You will get a total of 18 hours instructor led online training that will be conducted by an experienced instructor. 
In addition, you can attempt 5 online quizzes and 2 assessments. Multisoft will additionally provide you project work that will give you hands-on exposure. Further, you'd be given a 24 by 7 access to our e-learning center where you can access all the course material. After you complete the course, we will provide you a training certificate to credit your knowledge and expertise. This session was an attempt to provide you detailed information about the online 8051 microcontroller training offered by Multisoft. In order to register for the course or to ask any question, please write to us at info at